Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're going to talk about the second handmade pistol I ever made, a 22 caliber single shot target pistol. Before we get into that, I'd like to shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Thank you very much. This all costs money and your contributions help more than you know. So I'd also like to thank my channel benefactors who have provided donated ammunition, um, allowed me to show and talk about their guns, and been helpful in innumerable other ways. So, thank you all. So, a few years back, I had the notion that maybe I could make a handmade gun, and maybe I could make it better than the people who were doing it on YouTube at that time. And it turned out I could, and the first gun I made, because I'm me, was a single shot 45 caliber Derringer <laughs> because I don't do things by half. So for the second gun, I thought I would make a more rational gun after a fashion. I have to admit, I leaned pretty hard into the steampunk slash Star Wars blaster um, aesthetic. So um, the mechanism is extremely simple. There are two moving parts, the trigger and the hammer and a homemade spring, and a few other things that are best shown to you on the tabletop. So let's get to that. The target pistol is not a particularly small gun. It's 10 inches long and five inches high. Um, the hole in the frame is because I was trying to make a sliding bar style lock and it did not work. So I replaced it with the much simpler captured plunger that you can see here, which is quite adequate to lock the gun against the massive forces of 22 long rifle. Um, as you can see, there is no ejector because I have not done an ejector yet. There is a small relief here so I can get a fingernail under the rim of the cartridge to flip it out as you saw me do in the video. The sights are a ramp front with a little tiny piece of brass wire soldered to the top. And the rear is a simple blade made out of metal with a V-notch. And the sights are actually quite reasonably precise. Hard to see them because they're not big. And the um, gun is quite accurate, again, as you saw in the video. I have to admit, I was leaning quite hard into the steampunk slash Star Wars blaster aesthetic with this. And originally, much of this was squared off. But I went back later and did things like incorporate this half circle and bevel the edges of this and a bit of this and that. The grip, which is made of spalted maple laminated with spruce, um, was originally a full-on Olympic-style target grip. But that those are very specific to the hand of the user, and that meant I was the only one who could shoot the pistol. And part of the point of having cool, unique things is to let others enjoy them too. So eventually I modified the grip to this configuration where a much greater variety of people can handle it. So the barrel is made from a cut and turn down piece of a 1022 barrel, a Ruger 1022. Um, a good few years ago, the fashion was to purchase a brand new 1022 rifle and immediately hand it off to a gunsmith to replace the perfectly good barrel with something else. And over time, he accumulated a bunch of these. And so at one point when he was moving shop, he sold them off for $15 each. And I bought a couple for projects like this. The breech block is mild steel, as is the barrel weight and sight rib. The barrel is retained by this screw, which matches a divot in the top of the barrel, keeps things from shifting around. And these two screws go straight into the breech block, 
to retain the sight rib and barrel weight. The barrel weight and barrel are not in any way connected. So that's probably not the right way to do it, but it's the way I did it. Um, the gun is made from three layers of 5160 spring steel, quarter inch thick, and uh, the internal parts of the frame are soldered to the side plate. And the hammer and trigger, which are the only two moving parts on the gun, unless you count the spring, are also quarter inch thick 5160 spring steel. The spring is one I made myself, and I did not get the geometry exactly right. So cocking it is, there's no positive click when the trigger engages. Now as for the trigger, and I always dry fire it with the mechanism open so I don't hammer the firing pin into the back of the chamber. Uh, the trigger is, let's say you don't want to touch that trigger until you want the gun to go off because it breaks at about one pound and is very crisp. So even though you can't hear it engage, it does hold things securely until you're ready to fire. And there is a safety notch here that is very robust. I doubt you could drop this in under normal circumstances in any way that would overcome that notch and cause it to fire a cartridge. So it's a, it's an interesting piece. It's my second gun. As you can see, I did label this gun, Michael Pierce, Seattle, Washington, serial number 002, caliber 22. I have no memory of why I thought it was advisable to do that, but what the hell. And uh, it's been a fun plinker over the years, and it has accounted for some pests around the yard, uh, particularly using uh, um, CCI CB shorts, very low velocity, or six millimeter Flaubert, um, which it shoots quite well. And um, it's just a neat old gun. And I, I'd take it apart and show you the innards, but YouTube does not like that. And there's not much to see. There's a trigger, which incorporates a sear and a hammer and a spring and a little coil spring you can see here is a trigger return spring. And that's it. So, fun project. It's gonna really enjoyed and continue to enjoy. As a reminder for those who missed the memo, uh, according to the federal government, you are allowed to make for your own use any firearm you are legally entitled to possess, provided that it complies with all federal laws regarding firearms. In other words, if it's under 18 inches, it has to have a rifled barrel, etc., etc., etc. And um, state and local laws vary on this. There are some states in this country where you are not allowed to manufacture your own firearms, to prevent criminals from making firearms, which frankly is not and has not ever been a problem. <laughs> Although with the advent of 3D printing, there are criminals setting up illegal factories where they 3D print some of the components of firearms, but you know, that's illegal already. So anyway, this has been a lot of fun over the years. I shoot it fairly regularly. And after the uh, shop burned down and we were out of the house for seven months when blackberries ate the backyard, we got a, quite a lot of rats deciding it was a good place to live. And I used this with um, 22 CB shorts to convince them that this was not the way. <laughs> anyway, it's a lot of fun. I really like it. I've contemplated other modifications over the years after, you know, the modifications I've already talked about, but really I think it's just fine the way it is. So if you like the video, please take five seconds out of your busy life to, to click the thumbs up button because it really helps the channel. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe and notifications button. So. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.